Every day, seafarers' libraries send over a thousand books to merchant ships. Behind this service is an organization which is over 200 years old, the Marine Society. Based at their new London headquarters near Lambeth Palace, 202 Lambeth Road, and just 10 minutes walk from Waterloo Station, the Marine Society operates seafarers' libraries, the College of the Sea, Ship Adoption, and the London School of Nautical Cookery. As such, it continues its work as the world's oldest maritime charity, providing services for those at sea and for those who are interested in the sea. Founded in 1756 by Jonas Hanway, the Marine Society was formed to help young men make a career at sea. It helped 10,000 of them during the Seven Years' War alone. This statue at the end of the entrance hall represents the aims of the society at that time. Ever since that date, the society has provided, and still continues to provide, financial assistance for those who intend to make their career at sea, or who find themselves in financial difficulties once they are at sea. In 1786, the society commissioned the first pre-sea training ship, and ran training ships until 1939. Three of them were called Warspite. Up to that time, the Society provided over 100,000 seafarers with their kit and over 70,000 seafarers with their pre-sea training. Today's activities are rather different. For example, today the Society employs an art tutor at sea, and the work of those artists who have been to sea on behalf of the Society is on display in the main entrance hall. Musicians and a marine biologist have also been employed at sea by the society. Some of the results of the art tutor's efforts can be seen in the adjoining hallway, where paintings submitted by students are displayed, all of them serving seafarers. were submitted as entries in the Society's annual art competitions. The Society is concerned that the seafarer makes good use of his spare time, and among the facilities that it offers are painting and various other hobby kits. Like the ship's libraries, these are delivered direct to a ship, so that a ready supply is available on board. Not all models, of course, are made from kits, and still the seafarers' traditional arts interest some people. The Society runs the College of the Sea, which works mainly by correspondence. But a student can meet his tutor when on leave, like this chap here making his first personal visit. Students can even stay at the Marine Society's headquarters in the special study bedrooms which have their own self-catering facilities. A course of study is always tailored to suit the student. He or she can study as a hobby, take a GCE or open university degree, improve his mathematics, learn a language, or even seek help in writing a book. Advice on any educational or career problem is free, so is advice about books. Books of one kind or another are the Society's main area of interest. Books on hobbies, or in fact on any subject, can be borrowed on personal loan or bought outright. The selection of marine textbooks is second to none. Tapes are available too. Tapes on languages, tapes on ship's business, and even tapes for entertainment. One of the best ways of assimilating certain information is to watch a film on a particular subject. The film being seen here is one of the Society's own films about drawing and painting. The film library provided the first films ever seen by seafarers at sea. It now supplies documentaries, travel and training films. The hire of these films is arranged through the shipping companies, and currently there are over 2,000 films in circulation at any one time.
In the same building as the Marine Society is the Nautical Institute, a professional body representing deck officers which was launched by the Society. The sundial on the outside of the building was commissioned by both societies and incorporates the armillary sphere of the Nautical Institute and the sea dog symbol of the Marine Society. It was unveiled by the Queen in her role as patron. The flag which flies above the building is the Marine Society's own ensign, a blue ensign defaced by a representation of Britannia and a boy from a training ship. Also in the building, on the first floor, is the London School of Nautical Cookery, run by the Marine Society, and it is here that many of the ship's cooks are trained. Ship's cooks courses, parts one and two, as well as higher certificate courses can be taken. Courses for ship's cooks are each of six weeks duration, and the higher certificate course takes four weeks. This ship's bell, from the General Steam Navigation Company ship Philomel, was given to the Ship Adoption Society to commemorate the year of its own incorporation in 1936. Ship Adoption, too, is now part of the Marine Society's work. Seafarers willing to correspond with schools are always needed. This pamphlet is available from the Society and gives details of this type of work. Such links bring a breath of sea air into the classroom. The Society is particularly well known at sea for its seafarers' libraries, started in 1919 by the Seafarers' Education Service. Every year, some 350,000 books are dispatched to merchant ships in these familiar boxes. The library in each ship is changed about three times a year, and requests for particular books are met when changes are made. Since ships now pay off more frequently than they used to, books are also lent to individual seafarers, providing that they are willing to be found postage. Books wear out and have to be replaced, and books are also lost at sea. The fewer books that are lost, the better the service. Books are expensive. If a book contains this book plate, then it belongs to the Marine Society. But if found outside of a library, then it should be returned to Lambeth Road. The postage will be refunded. As well as lending books, the Society sells books and will supply them to anyone connected with the sea. It buys over a thousand new books every week to replenish the libraries and the 1,500 ships that it serves. The Society publishes its own courtly magazine, The Seafarer. This contains short stories, poems, and articles by seafarers, and in particular publishes reviews of the new books as they appear. The Marine Society's library, afloat and ashore, consists of more than 350,000 books. The titles seen here are all about the Merchant Navy and line the shelves in the office of the Society's director, Dr. Ronald Hope. The Marine Society is here to help the seafarer. It helps those who want to go to sea, it helps those who want to get on at sea, and it's also interested in the quality of life on board ship. It has no axe to grind. The more the services shown in this film are used, the better they will be. Do write your telephone. The address is on every book label, and the address and the telephone number are in every issue of the seafarer. Better still, uh, come and see us if you can. We can probably put you up. We shall certainly be very pleased to see you.